Unfortunately, many administrators ignore the system path page. First of all, the GD library is an open source graphics library wrapped within PHP that enables the creation of images such as PNGs, GIFs and JPEGs on the fly. It's a well-known web development tool. The second setting, path to du, that's disk usage, it's a standard Linux command, and it will help if you put the correct path here, it will help with directories and pages with lots of files being listed more quickly. Thirdly, we've got the path to aspell. Aspell is an application, a, a spell checking application that can be installed. Important to set up the right path here. Uh, the final setting, path to dot, this really is only useful for development profiling at the moment, so you can happily ignore this. It's important to configure the email settings within Moodle correctly. SMTP is the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and in here you put the address of your mail server. This could be an internal mail server, or it could in fact just be a standard uh, ISP mail server. If you require an SMTP username and password to send mail, then you need to specify those here. There's also a session limit option, which can speed up the sending of group messages, and a no reply address. Now that's used when the system sends an email to users and we don't expect a reply. So in here we might have no reply at moodlebytes.com for example. The second part of the email settings include the hour to send the digest email and that's for people who've elected to receive all their forum posts as one digest rather than as individual emails through the day. Uh, settings for the character set which uh, is useful on a multilingual site so that people can select their own character sets. Uh, we also have the identified support name, uh, that may be a help desk and support email, for example, helpdesk at hrdnz.com or helpdesk at moodlebytes.com. And it is possible as well to add an extra support page here. And, and this could have details about who to contact and what to do if you're experiencing problems using the site, for example. The Jabber page allows administrators to set up links to a Jabber server. Uh, Jabber is an open source, XML based, uh, distributed, messaging system, a little bit like an open source Yahoo or MSN for example. The session handling page has some important options. Firstly, the option to use the database for session information. This is useful for very large and very busy sites or sites built using clusters of servers. However, for a standard Moodle installation, this should definitely be switched off. The second option is the timeout period. So if people leave their themselves logged into Moodle but they're not doing anything, how long will it take to log out? Now two hours is quite a long time. Someone could walk away from their computer and somewhere else could actually use it. Uh, we tend to set our servers to about 30 minutes. The cookie prefix is simply the cookie identifier. Uh, so on Moodle Bytes, we use Moodle Bytes, for example. Moodle is able to generate some interesting statistics for administrators. Here we've got a number of settings, the maximum processing interval, which is how far back this will go the first time it's run. So if you have a Moodle site that's been running for three years and you decide to go back three years, that's going to be very intensive on your server. So you need to be quite realistic on these settings. Uh, the maximum runtime is, is how long we'll actually try and process those statistics. So again, uh, there are some options there to, to reduce that overhead on the server. And the number of days to process in each statistics execution. Uh, obviously once it's up to date, only one day at a time, so that's good. We also have an option to set the time that this happens at, and you definitely want this during a quiet time on your server. The final option is the user threshold, so you probably don't need statistics on courses that only have one or two users in them. Moodle needs to be connected to the internet for all sorts of reasons. Things like installing extra language packs, grabbing RSS feeds, sending forum posts, etc. If your Moodle site needs to go through a web proxy server to access the internet, then this is the page you need to set up all the proxy information. If you switch on maintenance mode, then no one can log into your Moodle site with the exception of administrators. When you do this, there is a standard message which is displayed. 
But as you can see here, you can put an optional, perhaps a more friendly or informative message. The cleanup page gives you various options. Firstly, if you're using email-based authentication, you can set the period within which you expect users to respond. You can also delete incomplete users after a set number of days. It's possible to log all guest access on your site. This may not be required. And you can also set the period to keep the logs for. Bear in mind that this does take up server space. Finally, you can control how grade history and the grade history lifetime operate. The environment page performs server checks to show how the software installed relates to your Moodle installation. You can check for the current Moodle version and also against potential future Moodle versions. The PHP info page shows the current version of PHP installed on your Moodle server. You can also see lots of detail regarding the configuration. The performance page allows you to assign extra PHP memory. Notice that the default for Moodle 2 is now 512. Some processes, such as backing up large files, do require more memory. So if you find that large courses aren't backing up, this could be something to check. The curl cache value can be left as it is, generally. Finally, a registration page, which is similar to registration at the top of the site administration menu.